Hi, fourth graders. Welcome back to TV Classroom. Mm, it's a great day. It is. Friends, before we get started, let's check on our zones. You want a zone check-in? We do. Yeah. Really? Yep, we do it every okay. time at the beginning, Mr. Kevin. <laughs> I know, I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, what zone are you in today? How are you feeling? Are you in the blue zone, the green zone, the yellow zone, or the red zone? Hmm. Mr. Kevin, what zone are you in today? Oh, I'm in the green zone. Great. Feeling awesome. pretty feeling pretty good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. And pardon? Go ahead. Oh, and I was just gonna say that uh, I'm hoping that you're in the same, but if but what are your zones? I'm in the green zone. I'm good. I'm getting a little hungry. Yep. It's lunchtime here at T V classroom. It is. I'm in the blue zone. Yeah. Oh. I'm feeling great. I have, my back's really hurting yeah. and I'm hungry and I'm yeah. Yeah. just all of a sudden not feeling great. So yeah. okay. we'll power through. Let's get through this. It's gonna be good. Here we go. Okay. Today and every day, we agree to our three personal standards, which are show, show respect, respect, make good decisions, decisions, solve problems. We start. I interrupted. Go ahead. One of the ways, it's okay. One of the ways we show respect is by making sure that we honor our indigenous lands and the people who were here before us. Yes, and we do that by inviting you to look outside your window. Look at the skies, look at the tree, look at the sky. There's just one. And the trees <laughs> and your surroundings. Our physical space stands on the unceded land of the Coast Salish people. We acknowledge the Coast Salish community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. We make this acknowledgement as part of our work to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and white supremacy. And during our lesson today, we are going to talk more about settler colonialism. We are. And what that is and how it impacted our indigenous people here in Washington State. Let's get learning. The essential question that we are focusing on is how do the land features of regions in Washington state change and shape our state history? I added the word state. So we're going all the way back to the indigenous people mm -hmm. before the settlers came. Yes. How did what they did and when the settlers arrived change and shape the history of Washington state? So in order to know that we have to understand how they lived. Mm -hmm. And indigenous history is Washington history. It is because this is their land. Yeah. Oh, take a look at this picture. What do you notice? What do you wonder? If you want to jot that down, you can. Or if you just want to think or share your thinking with someone next to you, that's okay too. Hmm. Mr. Kevin, what do you notice about this picture? Well, so I see some people sitting mm -hmm. and they, they they look like they're they're uh, they 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 look like they're um, what am I trying to say here? Um, uh, sitting in there and they're the other people are above them. What is mm. that word? They're like. I've heard you use the word subservient. Yeah, subservient. That's the. It, it seems that way, but you know sometimes you read a picture and it's wrong. Correct. I mean, if they're selling something then they're kind of the vendor, mm -hmm. right? They're sitting there, they've got their wares, mm -hmm. and then the people are walking up to them. Mm -hmm. So. It's hard to know. Hard to know. But they are selling something. It looks like they baskets are. of some kind. Mm -hmm. And they're sitting on the coast. I see water behind them. Mm -hmm. And then I see people wearing completely different clothing yeah. buying mm -hmm. from them. Yes. And what do you notice? I was thinking about um, land features mm -hmm. and how where people lived determined what resources they had access to yes and then how they had income mm. based on what they had access to if i can't access something i can't use it for income right so i think that's what we're going to learn about today. sounds great let's review some of our really big science. social studies oh social studies they're, you know Sorry. what they're science words too they're both because they're about geology and land features and about people. And about people. Which and is um, anthropology. Anthropology, a study of people. Okay. So. Okay, ready? Yes. We got it. Big social studies and science words. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We <laughs> learned that a plateau is a high level area of land. And a region is an area with a common climate and certain features. Mm -hmm. And one feature is a lowland and land that is low in respect to the surrounding country or land. We also learned about industry. 
This is turning raw materials into a finished product to sell or use. Mm -hmm. And resources are an area's wealth and means of producing wealth. So, so. it's the things they use to create an industry. Mm -hmm. Then we have economy, which is the system of how money is made and used. So what was their economy like for the resources that they used to create their industry? Yes. They all go together. They do. They all go together. Hmm. Hmm. Energy. I feel like I made a mistake here. I think you did. Okay, skip. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was for fifth grade. I think that was for preview for next preview year. Preview for next year, friends. <laughs> so we have this chant. Ooh. Are these Washington regions? By Charity Nunnally in 2010. Let's do it. Okay. Is this the coastal region? Yes, ma'am. Is this the coastal region? Yes, ma'am. How do you know? There are rainforests. How do you know? There are sandy beaches. Give me some examples. The Quinault and Ho rainforests. Give me an example. Long Beach, Washington. Should we stop there because that's what we're talking about today? Let's do it. Yeah, focus on that. So let's see, the coastal region, we're going to have rainforests. We're going to have sandy, sandy beaches. beaches. And then some of the local tribes are the Quinault and the Ho. And the Macaw. Tribes, and the Macaw. And a modern day city is mm -hmm. Long Beach. Yes. Ooh, spoiler. Right. Okay, okay, friends. We are going to do an input chart. We're going to learn all about the coastal people that lived on the coastal region. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Hazen, what do you think we should start with? Let's start with Shelter. shelter. I love it. Shelter is the types of homes that they had. This is the type of shelter. Now, what kind of shelter did they have? They had long houses, A and long houses house. were made of cedar planks, mm -hmm. and the long houses could be moved. That is so interesting. I wonder why they would need to move them. Hmm. Thinking about land features. Maybe like to get new things that they needed, or mm. maybe if their family was moving to a different part of the coast. I know that tribes kind of stuck together, mm -hmm. but maybe different seasons they lived in different parts of the coast. Oh, maybe. I don't know. So they had longhouses. And thinking about the features and land features is that if the longhouses were made of cedar, they must have had a lot of access to the resource of cedar. Ah, uh, and what do we know about the coastal region? It's of... on a rainforest. Mm -hmm. And what's in a forest? Trees. trees. And in Washington, what kind of trees? Cedar. cedar. There's lot. other kinds, mm -hmm. but we have so many cedar trees. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing they would use cedar for is to make this salmon rack. And this is where they would have salmon dry. Hmm. So salmon, after they would fish them, I almost said hunt, you don't hunt salmon. They would hang them here on this rack and they would dry. They also had fire pits that they mm -hmm. used for smoking. So smoking is where you put it not on the flame, it's like indirect heat. Mm -hmm. And that indirect heat with the flame down here and the smoke, then smokes and cooks mm -hmm. and preserves either the halibut, which they could get off the coast, or the salmon. should have used my other pen that's okay okay so that's their shelter okay and kind of what they would mm -hmm. eat what should we do next let's talk about transportation because you talk okay. about moving like among yeah. along the coast yeah so, so how did they do that well they have all different sizes transport I have to spell correctly first that all different sizes of canoes mm. and different sized canoes had different purposes and they made those canoes of? Cedar. Cedar. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to notice a pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if all of that cedar shaped our state history and our industries later on. What do you think, friends, from what we've already learned? It did. Yeah. But we learned it from the coastal people. Mm -hmm. We learned how to use these trees and this lumber and this cedar from the coastal people. They mm -hmm. taught us how. They did. Pretty amazing. What should we do next? Um, how about land? Yep. Because, you know, it shapes it, right? Yep. So we had 
all of these, this land, all these mountains, these beautiful trees. Mm -hmm. We had lakes and rivers, but most importantly, it was along the coast. You know, Mr. Wally and I have been looking for some land to buy, mm -hmm. and we, it's a lot of trees. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of trees everywhere. So it was along the coast, and it was here in the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting about the Pacific Ocean is that their villages where they lived, that's what they called them, villages, were located along ocean beaches. They had access to the water. Mm. Why do you think they needed to have access to this water? I can think of a couple different reasons, but I'm thinking about food that yep. I get from the water. Like fish, mm -hmm. salmon, halibut, like ocean mammals, mm -hmm. like whales. The macaw, they hunted gray whales. Those are and they big. were very good at it. And crabs. Mm -hmm. Or clams and mussels, all those other little tide pool creatures. They would hunt them and eat them. So having access to this land feature or water feature influenced their economy and their industry, which has then influenced our Econ current l economy and industry. So they had a special canoe mm -hmm. when they would go hunting that could hold up to 60 people. Woo. And they would use this canoe. For something big. Yep, sometimes for if they were in battle or if they were hunting the very large gray whale. And what mm -hmm. they would do is they would tie it up and they would drag it in and they would use seals. They would eat the meat of the seal and to hunt the whales, because whales eat seals, mm -hmm. they would float the seal carcass in the water oh. for the whales to come and then they would hunt the whales with their harpoons and spears. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's the land. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. They really did use the natural resources. They did. The fish and the cedar mm -hmm. and the marine life were so important. Very. What about their clothing? Yeah, how can you use cedar to make clothing? Well, they would use cedar bark. So they would layer the cedar or they would mill it down and create, be able to create clothing out of the pieces of bark and weave oh. it together. And that's how they created their clothing. And they would create blankets out of it too that would keep them warm. Clothing, let me show you a picture. Now this is just a sketch, you'll get to see later. But pretend like this is a big blanket that someone has wrapped around their shoulders mm -hmm. and it's all woven together and sometimes they would dye it they would use roots and plants to dye mm -hmm. what they had and then they would have this hat and some of the hats were just really small pieces of cedar but sometimes and they called it a basket hat because it was in the shape of a basket, basket. Mm -hmm. pretty interesting huh but they use the cedar to make the hat and their clothes. So they're using cedar for their shelter. Yep. They're using cedar to cook their food. They're using cedar to make their clothing. Mm -hmm. They're using cedar to make their transportation. That all, I see how all of that can then impact That's their industry the and history. economy. Yeah. And as people come, as settlers come and learn from them, they learn to also use the cedar for different things. Okay, well, let's talk about that contact with settlers. Let's, because it sounds like a good idea. Yeah if the settlers are not greedy. Basically right. what it boils down to. Yeah. So what happened was these settlers came. One settler that came was um, Lewis and Clark. Mm -hmm. They came and this is what happens when the Macaw people had contact with settlers. Let's make a prediction. Okay. What do you think at home happened? You can't see me, Oop, I'm stuck. I'm just going to wiggle myself around. What do you think happened? Well, they came from a foreign land. Mm -hmm. And with them, they brought sickness. Mm. That sickness spread through the Macaw people, mm -hmm. and two-thirds of them died. That sounds like... Uh, some modern day sickness. Yeah, we know what that's that we're like. we're experiencing the last year and a half. So if there were three macaw people who contracted a sickness, two of them died. died. And they might not have 
They might not have contracted it. Maybe a but third of them didn't contract them. it. Okay. But two thirds of the people died. Wow. That's a lot of people that, that lost their people. life because their bodies were not made, just like the coronavirus, mm -hmm. our bodies are not made to fight it yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't learned it yet. Right. Their bodies learned it eventually and they stopped dying, but they lost two thirds of their people. They didn't have modern medicine to help them. They didn't have vaccines, no vaccines. back then. Then in 1853, a treaty happened. Oh, a treaty is like a deal. A deal, a deal they made with the settlers. And here's their deal. Most of their land rights, gone. So they had to move. They had to move to a reservation, which is a place they had to stay and live and not leave. That they didn't choose. That they didn't choose. That doesn't sound very, but uh, they traded in rights to be able to hunt. They got their rights to hunt whales and fish. So they still got their whales and fish, but they didn't have any access to land. Mm. I want you to think about that for a minute. How did that impact their history? How did that impact <laughs> them? What did they use for shelter, for transportation, for clothing? Cedar. cedar. Where is cedar? On the land. Trees on the land. And they were reduced to what they could use. So what we learned from them, we started an industry with a lot of cedar and wood we and did. trees, but we took it from them. Mm -hmm. hmm. Makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel uncomfortable? It does. And can we use the term settlers instead of we? Yes. Just because I, I, I didn't even realize I said we. That just makes me think about like a we versus them. Correct. And, and it's settlers. And it's settlers. It's happened long ago. Yeah. It's not happening. We didn't do it now. Mm -mm. And we are learning more. So we're going to do better, right? Mm -hmm. When we know better, we do better. Yes. But it's important to know that history. Yes, it is. That that happened. Whether, whether that makes you feel comfortable or not, that's beside the point. It happened. Mm -hmm. So what do we do about it? We learn about it. We, we learn, learn about it and we don't do it again. Mm -hmm. And we help repair that relationship. Mm -hmm. And we honor the ancestors. Yes. So that's part of the coastal people. So how did our land impact the industry of Washington State and the history of Washington mm. State? Ooh. Before you, we talk about what your assignment is, let's look yeah. at some pictures. I found some really cool pictures. You did. I was so excited that I found them. I just kicked my water bottle. That's okay, Miss Oslin. <laughs> I just kicked the table, so, you know, we're just kicking everything. <laughs> this is a Salish woman carrying a stiff basket. And if you look really closely on that stiff basket, there's a headband that's attached to that basket. Mm -hmm. And she has it on her back, and she's collecting roots for food. And they'll peel them and dry them or cook them. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Makes What's me a think tool? Yeah. Oh, she's there's a tool, a tool there. What are they doing with that, Ms. Oslin? Uh, it looks like they're using it to either dig them up, like a shovel, because it says she's digging roots. Mm -hmm. um, but it also reminds me of other farming equipment. Like plows and mm -hmm. things that we use now. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we got the idea from the native people or if other places they use a similar tool because that's the tool that makes mm -hmm. sense to use. Yeah. I don't know. Here's some of their clothing, the cedar bark clothing. Mm -hmm. Look at all the different ways it can look. Different colors. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's different textures. Looks like we've got skirts and shawls and then pants and a shawl. Lots of shawls, mm -hmm. things to drape over your shoulders to keep mm -hmm. you warm. Maybe some jewelry. Mm -hmm. and like a headband and a hat. Really Ooh. interesting. This is a Coast Salish weaver spinning with a huge spindle and whorl about the size of this one in 1915. Look at that. That's huge. So probably going to use that material to weave a basket, much like yep. the one on the left of the picture. Or a blanket. Look at the blanket mm -hmm. she's sitting oh, on. Oh, yeah. That looks very much like that. And that would keep them Same warm. Color. Mm -hmm. And provide something for them to have trade and industry with. This is in Squim Bay. It's not that far from here, about an hour it's away. Not. And they're clamming. The tide would go out, yeah. they'd go out in their boat, they'd wait, the tide would go out and they would settle. 
they would go clamming all day long, mm -hmm. and then they'd get back in the boat, and as the tide came back in, then they were able to paddle back to shore and bring all the harvest mm. they found in the bay. Clams, oysters, so what else? Mussels, crabs. So they're using the tide yes. to help build their Indus economy. Mm -hmm. Because in the they could then industry. trade their clams with settlers mm. for things that they needed from the settlers, and the settlers wanted to eat the clams. So industry started where they weren't just starting to do it for themselves, mm -hmm. they started to then trade with the settlers. Yeah. Okay. So now you're going to take a moment, check back in with your inquiry chart. What did you learn? What do you think you know about Washington history? What questions came up as we were doing our coastal mm -hmm. people input chart? I have questions and I've done this input chart before and I have questions. Right? The more you know, the right. more like you I'm want I'm really to know. wondering about these settlers and if there was anything that was positive that happened because mm. of them. Yeah. I'm curious what positive impacts they had on each other. Mm -hmm. I know there were negative ones, but were there any positive? And if there were, what were they? And how did that shape or form history? Right. And what happened exactly during the treaty? Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? Why was that allowed to happen? Mm -hmm. I want to research that more and find yeah. out more. So today we were thinking about what do the land features of regions in Washington State, specifically today we're talking about the coastal lowlands, mm -hmm. how did they change and shape our state history? And that's what you're going to write about today. Or create a poem about, or make some art about. Or a song. Right. We just, you get to choose how you tell us what you learned. Mm -hmm. You just have to tell us. And you can do that on Flipgrid. Flipgrid. Your teacher has the link and the codes for you. Mm -hmm. You'll look for episode 416, mm -hmm. and that's where you'll find the question to answer, and you can respond down below. Mm -hmm. Now, Matt, go ahead. If you're not comfortable <laughs> with Flipgrid, Mr. Kevin has two more ways that you can share with us what it is that you have learned. Yes. That's right, fourth graders. You can use your laptop to email us at tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Yep. Or why don't you send us something in the mail? We'd be thrilled to get something yeah, in the mail from you. We sure would. TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now it's time for affirmation. Do you have one in mind? I forget what it was. No. Um, I had one earlier, but it flew out of my brain. Okay. Should we remind ourselves that we can be respectful of our elders and ancestors? Yes. I am respect respectful of my elders and ancestors, the okay. people that came before me. Sounds great. So I'll Here take a deep breath together and say our affirmation. I, I am respectful, respectful of my, my elders and, and ancestors. ancestors. Excellent job today, fourth graders. We mm -hmm. hope you have a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. Bye friends. See you on Flipgrid.
Rules. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get 10 points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, see how many points you can get. Good luck.